If you think that a Piaggio Ape or a French Velosaur legs are eccentric small vehicles, then you haven't seen this bizarre vehicle I stumbled across at my last summer vacation in Italy. What looks like a poor DIY crossover between a moped and a rubbish container is the Vespa Ciao Porta. It comes from the Italian vehicle manufacturer Piaggio, that is mostly known for the vintage Vespa scooters. The basic moped, the Vespa Ciao, was the most simple and most sold moped from Piaggio. When I was 15, I owned a Vespa Boxer from 1973 and a Vespa Bravo from 1982. This is the special relation I have to the Vespa mopeds. The Chow Porter was a really low, low budget derivate of the Vespa Chow moped. It could carry up to 100 kilograms. Today, it is a rare vehicle for collectors. This year, 55 years after its presentation, I decided to honor this vintage everyday helper by a modern reinterpretation for kids. Yippee -yay -yay. Aluminum extrusions from Infento. Here we go again. Luigi, come si risolve il problema dello sterzo? The steering is my absolute favorite part. I'm sure this is a real unicorn on public roads, but so is the original. The vertical steering column is linked to a bar and on each end of this bar we see one push rod going to each front wheel, but in a crosswise manner. This all happens in a flat space underneath the front container. It took me a while to understand that the steering was going in the right direction at all, not to speak of an Ackermann effect. But it works brilliantly with very little parts. My appreciations to the Italian designer. The box at the front has a floor of wood panels. The sidewalls are cut with a knife from red Infento cardboard boxes. The box is sized so that you can put two standard folding baskets side by side in it. Or alternatively, four stacks of newspapers. The remaining design of the frame is held closely to the original. The petrol tank is where the luggage carrier is normally located. In my case, it is a 36 volt battery. The handlebar has moped style. I could have used the common combination of Infento L joints and swivel plates here. But the straight positioning blocks from Infento are causing too much backlash in the joint, and for a steering bar, this is really annoying. So I designed what I call the multi-joint plate. Even printed with a low resolution, it is absolutely free of backlash. It is very useful. You can find the 3D model amongst and many other of my models on Thingiverse. Like this bell holder, these corner covers, or this license plate dummy. The Chow moped has no suspension at all, but it has a sprung seat, 
like old bicycles have. I used once more an Infento shock absorber for this feature. But if you don't own such a shock, no worries, you can just build a rigid seat instead. Mopeds are derivates of bicycles, therefore they don't have footrests, but pedals. The porter can be driven by pedals, or by motor instead. Both drives transmit their power to the rear axle over freewheels, so the pedals don't turn while driving by the motor. The small reflective rim sidewall stickers are just too beautiful to be forgotten. They are a bit stiff and therefore very easy to apply. They are really highly reflective and they can be found on Ali for 2 euros per set of 12. The front wheels are significantly smaller than the rear wheel, so they fit underneath the container. For 12 euros, I found an inexpensive set of 8.5 inch by 2 inch tires on eBay. It seems that this is a very common tire format for e scooters and baby strollers. I designed and 3D printed in Fendo compatible 4.5 inch rims for these tires. The result are air filled wheels that are marginally larger than Infento 7 inch wheels. You can use both types of wheels on this ride. The first option offers more comfort, while the second has less driving resistance. In either case, you have to drive over steps in the pavement with caution. Last but not least, a new technical gadget has its debut on this ride. This little grey box with pigtail is a remote controlled kill switch. With a powerful two button remote control, you can cut the power of the motor in up to 200 meters of distance. It is a sensible safety feature when the kid drives towards a potential hazardous area and you are too far away to run after. Although the motor does not brake actively, the ride will slow down and come to stop just as it happens when you release the throttle grip. The grey box is connected plug and play between the motor and the throttle cable and it requires no extra battery. When the motor is powered on, the throttle is in the kill state by default so the kit can't override the kill functions by switching the motor off and on again. If you are interested in getting such a kill switch for yourself, please contact me over the Facebook Messenger. To conclude, the cloning of the chop porter from Infento building parts. I admit, the ride looks bulky and clumsy, but the kids really enjoy driving around cargo of friends in the front trunk, like an Indian rickshaw. I leave you with these uncommented impressions. Don't forget to share and subscribe, other exciting projects are in preparation for this year. <laughs>